What's up Colorado State Rams fans, Rich Kurtzman here at Moby Arena for your Colorado State Rams men's basketball team who are 2-0 on this season, albeit two ugly wins, uh, but they are 2-0, two ugly gritty wins, uh, but you know, Colorado State and anybody will take a win when they can get a win. Uh, tonight's win, it should have been an easy victory over for Lewis, a D2 school, uh, but Larry Stacy said after the game that when they scheduled this team last year that they knew they could lose to the Skyhawks because they play that kind of basketball where they a challenge you to shoot the deep ball which Colorado State is not good at and they also will make a lot of difficult contested shots which Joshua Blaylock did all night long now Colorado State won 84 to 75 over the Skyhawks and it was it was really close through the entire game and including until the very end of the game. Uh, it was within four points with two minutes to go when Colorado State finally consulted away and win the game. Uh, in the first half, Fort Lewis, they really took it to Colorado State. They had all the energy. They stole the ball. They out-rebounded Colorado State, um, and they led 31-30, to leading the entire first half except for uh, very at the very end, 25 seconds before the break, and then uh, Fort Lewis took the uh, the lead back. And Emmanuel Mogbo, who was huge in this game, he uh, he told us after the game he had 20 points uh, as well as 15 rebounds. He said we were playing tentative in the first half and didn't get any stops, which was clear to anyone in attendance. Uh, Fort Lewis was really just taking it to Colorado State uh, on the offensive end, defensive end, rebounding the ball controlling the game all around. In the second half, um, Shea Bob said that they put an emphasis on pounding the ball inside. It was the same as uh, on Sunday against New Mexico State. They had to take the ball inside, draw the fouls, go to the line, and hit the free throws. Now, Colorado State went 29 of 34 from the free throw line. There was a giant 34 to 10 disparity in free throw attempts. and. Uh, the Rams, you know, they were highly efficient from the line, and those kind of sh shooting numbers are going to win you games in time, and they did tonight. Um, but still, Amogbo said, we never felt comfortable the entire time, and, you know, even with him scoring 20, with Shea Bob scoring 20, they needed those extraordinary, effort, extraordinary efforts from those two guys to lead them to this victory. They weren't going to win uh, with the very limited shooting capability that they have with Colorado State Rams without Gian Havel, who continues to be suspended. Um, and that will continue to go on for, it's indefinite. So, um, you know, a lot of the calls did go Colorado State's way here at Moby Arena being the D1 school, but they're not gonna get all of those calls, especially when they go on the road. This Sunday they do against the 2-0 Stanford Cardinal, uh, who have beaten Harvard and Cal State Northridge to be 2-0 themselves. They have Weber State before they play Colorado State. The Rams take on Stanford in California at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. You can see that game on the Pac-12 Network. But uh, let's get to some more Larry Eustacey quotes. He said, um, it was the exact kind of game that they needed. They needed to be challenged like that to wake themselves back up. They beat uh, New Mexico State 64-61 on Sunday and they were flying high, and even Eustacey said that he was doing too much by dancing in the locker room, that this team is too immature, and, you know, Eustacey just needs to st step up and lead straight up, and uh, I think he's realizing that as well now. Um, you know, he asked the team, he said, if they believe in him after the game, they said, of course we do, and he said <clears throat> he knew that they believed in him, but he wants to see that play out in their actions, and um, it's just simply gonna take time you Stacy said quote time is the only thing that will get this team better and better and you know time is running short on finding out how they can play more consistently on both ends of the floor with a good Stanford team coming up on Sunday and the non-conference schedule is going to continue to get much harder they have Wichita State CU and um, even Arkansas Fort Smith which you uh, Stacy said is the number four team in the country for their division you know I asked uh, Stacey if this was more of a telling game for his team or for Fort Lewis, and he said for Fort Lewis because they really played up to the Rams. I think it was very telling for Colorado State, though. They played down to their level of competition, that they didn't have anyone step up, especially in the first half, until finally J.D. Page did with seven points and two steals in the first bit of the first half, and then it was the Shea Bob show, and then it was the Emmanuel Mogo show. This was not a team together. They ran into each other multiple times going after rebounds, 
Uh, one of them actually uh, made Kamani Jackson bleed when he hit uh, Emmanuel Mogbo as they were both going for a rebound. And so, uh, Eustace said he just simply needs to have more patience and stay with it. Stay with his team as they continue to grow throughout the course of the season. But two games in, one week in, Colorado State is 2-0. and So another happy, joyous night with quote-unquote 2,200 people here at Moby Arena. And uh, Eustace was happy again, though cautiously uh, optimistic. And he's got to be scared going into Stanford this Sunday. That should be a good game. Again, that's on the Pac-12 network, and you can uh, tune in at 4 p.m. Mountain Time on Sunday afternoon. Once again, I'm Rich Kurtzman for 5280 Sports Network. Thank you for tuning in.